Okay. Uh, just uh, this webinar is organized by Aria Technologies. Uh, we are a Salesforce Rich partner uh, specializing in uh, manufacturing solutions. And that's where we present to you, uh, you know, a case management significance of case management in manufacturing uh, industry. As a part of quick introduction, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Aria Technologies. Uh, and a Salesforce solution architect. I'll let Sridhar and Roshan introduce themselves. Hey everybody, uh, good morning and good evening everybody. Uh, so I am Sridhar, I'm a senior uh, technical architect at uh, ARIA. Hi all, I am Roshan Makija. I am a Salesforce developer at ARIA and a marketing cloud enthusiast. Thank you. Great. Uh, so we three will be uh, doing this webinar here and uh, walking you through uh, the case management and the significance of it in uh, manufacturing industry. This will be our agenda. Uh, we'll go through introduction challenges uh, in manufacturing ecosystem. Manufacturing cloud for service, uh, the key features what Salesforce really brings on the table and a demo by Roshan. So Sridhar, uh, tell me why a manufacturing specific solution? I mean, there are so many industries uh, and Salesforce is a great platform, but what's what's so special with manufacturing? You're working with a manufacturing client, so can you help us understand what is so special? Sure. So service in a manufacturing uh, company is very different from any other uh, uh, industry companies like uh, take for example fintech edtech uh, these do not have any tangible products but with the manufacturing companies the manufacturers do produce tangible products uh, which need uh, some level of uh, installation maintenance they need to undergo uh, maintenance and uh, services and repairs as well so all this data needs to be uh, updated on a CRM system uh, for the service agent to be able to uh, understand what's been happening with that particular uh, customer or the component that the customer has bought. And uh, look at the product life uh, cycle right from the conception to design and uh, through the production till the service and uh, think about uh, recycling as well. Uh, there is a lot of uh, thought put behind all of this uh, by the manufacturer. Like, what would be the cost of uh, the uh, product that they will be uh, selling? What would be the price of the services that will be um, given to the uh, companies? And what will be the um, maintenance charges for any of the services provided? And uh, think of the recycle value of the product as well. Customization level, there is a lot of uh, customization that will be required. Uh, think of uh, uh, different customers uh, having uh, different production lines. Not all production lines will be the same. So there will be some degree of customization required. And what customization is specifically performed for a specific customer requirement, all that needs to be uh, updated in the CRM system so that uh, the service engineer when he comes to resolve a service ticket or a case he has all that information handy uh, for processing think of uh, technical expertise uh, there is a, a deep technical expertise needed for the technicians um, in terms of uh, knowing the product well um, and uh, also the technicians undergo a lot of uh, training themselves. So the right technician needs to be put on work for a specific component, um, maybe uh, with a specific expertise. Uh, and think about the after sales uh, market. So not just the production, uh, it doesn't stop at the production and sale of the product, right? Uh, so um, future ready uh, manufacturers are now looking at a complete end-to-end uh, -end life cycle of the product. So uh, right from sales to the service of the uh, product, 
um, and think of spare parts and uh, diagnosis services, all that uh, is kind of revenue generating and future ready uh, manufacturers are now looking at uh, service as a revenue center. Yeah, it totally makes sense. And uh, uh, this this all is great on the high level. Definitely, this are the business challenges which every manufacturer I hope is is trying to solve to the best. But let's say if I am a service rep, what are the key challenges that I face and how do I solve them? Uh, can you throw some light on that? Right. Uh, as we discussed, uh, there are a lot of things that uh, needs to be uh, put on the CRM system for uh, end to end data that the sales rep can uh, read through and on a single page. So uh, in the current world, uh, look at uh, the uh, conservative uh, manufacturers having uh, using the Excel's or um, even the papers of, uh, so they have a lot of uh, data sitting in disparate systems and it's really hard to get that uh, real uh, one uh, picture of uh, what is going on with a specific customer and for that specific component uh, that the case was resolved, uh, case was raised for. And also look at the warranty administrators. Uh, they have a lot of, uh, uh, problem looking for the warranty details, uh, as in the CRM data, that is the contact uh, data sits in uh, the CRM system and all the warranty is in maybe a legacy ERP. So looking at two different systems and uh, grasping all that data, putting it together, uh, resolving the case will be uh, highly uh, challenging for them. And also there's chances that uh, paper written notes are uh, very much replaced and that causes a lot of uh, issues. Now uh, look at the uh, warranty claims uh, adjudicators. Uh, so uh, looking at a particular warranty claim, they need to verify a lot of details on what the um, defective products are, uh, what is the existing coverage on that particular asset and uh, all that needs to be uh, taken care of before uh, the uh, adjudicated the claim can be um, granted and uh, uh, make a payout on that particular case. And um, there is a lot of um, um, forecasting done on the production itself, like uh, how much uh, based on the uh, opportunity pipeline, you can uh, forecast how much uh, product quantity that uh, needs to be um, produced, but you do not have a specific metric or a forecast for spare part, uh, um, meaning uh, production of the spare parts. Look at, uh, maybe take example of a tire that was uh, burst in a month, and you cannot say that in the next month the tire will be burst and you need to have a replacement product for that at the warehouse. So. Uh, if you have a lot of data sitting and uh, you can process that data and uh, you can run some um, uh, forecasting and um, apply some formulas, uh, you can end up uh, um, getting a forecast for spare parts as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I I would hate the company if my vehicle spare part is not available. Uh, at the right point of time uh, and I'm being asked to wait for like like three months just to get that st spare part. So uh, that's a very difficult situation for any manufacturer to get in. So can like uh, you have worked on manufacturing projects. So tell me how how Salesforce solves this all problems. Right, so Salesforce has uh, created uh, uh, industry vertical uh, platforms for each of the industry, like say for automotive, uh, for manufacturing, health, and right this, uh, here we have a manufacturing cloud specifically built for the manufacturing industry. And uh, with that, you have the number one platform, uh, which is highly resilient and uh, secure, and you have, uh, every four month uh, innovation uh, coming uh, right to you uh, without any additional cost. So that is a major selling thing. 
uh, I mean, you're relaxing and Salesforce is uh, working hard uh, at the back for your innovations. Uh, on the manufacturing itself, uh, so uh, there is uh, something called the service console, uh, which is uh, giving you ability to visualize and manage the entire uh, product lifecycle um, uh, and the engagement you have with the customers, what all cases have been uh, raised with that particular customers and what services have been del delivered with a particular asset. Uh, all that is captured uh, on the service console. And then uh, you have asset service console. Uh, so on the asset service, uh, you have a complete visualization of uh, what related alerts like uh, if an asset uh, needs a particular maintenance at a particular schedule, uh, all that uh, will come up for you. And uh, if there is a asset hierarchy, uh, think of a, a complex uh, component involving multiple uh, parts. All that asset hierarchy can be built into the asset uh, console and uh, the service timelines uh, when what happened on a particular component can be added and all the related cases work orders uh, and uh, warranties uh, that are associated with the assets all are uh, uh, shown on the single uh, console for the service uh, engineer to work upon. And there is a separate component for warranty lifecycle. Think of uh, uh, creating warranty terms like uh, what a period of uh, particular part can be in warranty, uh, uh, what type of parts can be uh, given warranty, like uh, think of uh, a plastic thing uh, component that doesn't fall under warranty, that all terms can be placed on a warranty term. And uh, you can associate a warranty with uh, an asset or a product. So you have that flexibility that uh, you can uh, right away. Uh, I mean, when a customer is buying a product, you can right away associate a warranty term with a product or an asset. Um, yeah, yeah very and, and then, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. And then you can build some automation uh, for the claim process uh, whenever a particular um, uh, partner uh, or a distributor is uh, selling for you or uh, has a complaint on a comp uh, particular component from his customer. Uh, he can uh, directly run some APIs or uh, get into a portal to raise a claim and that uh, gets into the CRM and uh, there can be automated processes to approve the claims and adjudicate, ad adjudicate the warranty claims. Hmm. Are, are these the only features or there is much more than this what we can do uh, in Salesforce for the manufacturing industry? Right, so apart from this, uh, you also have something called the pre-work estimation. Uh, so you can um, have the field technician write uh, when he's on the field, generate uh, estimates for uh, the issues that has the defective uh, components, uh, generate uh, estimate and right away get approval and uh, work on the specific uh, uh, issue parts and uh, this is more uh, deep dive on uh, the service console so you can have uh, alerts coming up for uh, warranty extensions uh, and then uh, you can have some iot uh, alerts uh, coming in from the external systems as well like you have a component installed at a particular uh, customer's place and uh, if there is any performance degradation uh, that can kind of generate a, a event and that comes into the CRM as a alert and that can be shown. So you are more proactive on creating a case by yourself than the customer reaching out that there is a performance degradation. So all that can happen uh, and you can have a lot of data sitting right in one page. Like uh, if a customer calls in, uh, you have all his data uh, where he's, uh, uh, I mean, working at the company and uh, what are the assets uh, he's bought, what are the orders he has uh, 
may be placed in the last um, um, maybe a month or so. Uh, what are the cases that uh, he has uh, generated or uh, raised? And all that information uh, can be um, placed in one uh, particular page. And uh, there is something called uh, actions and recommendation by Salesforce as well, where it uh, digest the data from uh, the cases and it recommends uh, uh, what is the next best action for the service technician or like raise a case or extend the warranty all that can be done yeah i know uh, if i call a service rep uh, if they don't know my details uh, it's very frustrating so having a functionality where if i call or do a chat message popping up all my details in one screen for a service rep is really, really helpful. A lot of companies are struggling with that. I definitely know that. What else? So um, as we spoke about the asset uh, service console, uh, there is a lot of uh, granular, granular detail uh, that can go into the uh, asset details page as well uh, meaning when the asset was installed was there any maintenance done was there any service was there any spare part replaced uh, for that and uh, look at the warranties claims uh, that had happened for that particular asset and any related cases or um, warranty terms uh, that are related to the uh, asset itself all that uh, sits in the uh, asset console and that is a good to have a 360 degree of a asset that the uh, service uh, technician right at the uh, goal looks at and uh, has a complete picture of what has been happening with the asset and the customer itself. Great. Uh, I believe uh, enough of talking. We need to see something in action. Let's uh, look at the demo. So, Roshan, do you want to go ahead and share your screen? Show us things in action, please. Thank you, Sridhar. Sure. It was a great brief about uh, what Salesforce Manufacturing Cloud can do. Sure, thanks. Thank you, Dipish. Thank you, Sridhar. That was a great overview of manufacturing cloud can do for uh, the industry. Uh, let's see uh, whatever you are talked about in action now. So today we are going to demonstrate how cases are managed in manufacturing cloud and how we can enhance the support experience. So cases can be created in many ways in our system. Salesforce manufacturing cloud provides you to uh, like many ways to create cases in your system. Uh, they have got channels like chatbots, websites, or even the customers can call on to your uh, support numbers uh or they can create a case directly from your website we have one such use case today where a customer is facing issue over the product and he has raised the case over the same and whenever a case is uh, created in our system the cases are being routed using the omni channel based on the your support user skills and their availability so when I turn on my Omni channel, I would see whatever uh, what cases will be assigned to me. So I get a view of all the cases that are open and uh, ready for uh, acceptance by our support users. So I will accept one of the case. So when I accept one of the case, I am taking I am taken to the uh, our intelligent service console, which provides me all the details related to that case. So what information I get on this uh, console is, uh, firstly, I get a contact card, which gives me basic details about the customer who has raised the case, the, their account with which, which we are doing business with, some milestones that the support user needs to go through to successfully handle the case. Then we come over here where uh, the support user gets details about the case and what uh, issue the customer is facing, uh, what was the origin of the case, and a brief description about the issue that the customer is facing. 
So user also get the information about the stages that the cases has to go through to successfully co close this case, as well as the support user is also provided with some guidance through which he can successfully uh, handle the case. The other things we get on this uh, console is uh, some common proactive actions that the user can use to uh, uh, handle this case like create work orders for this case, extend warranties for the assets that customer has bought, escalate this case for the uh, reassign this case to another support user or do some asset troubleshootings. Custom, uh, the user also gets the information about the asset details on which uh, the user uh, the customer has raised the case for and some basic details about it and it also notifies that uh, is the asset in warranty sometimes even our customers raise a case like where is my order and so so the user also get uh, alerts about their recent orders the customer also gets a, a knowledge section where he can search for any knowledge article which he wants to use to uh, assist with this case and some important case tools which he can use like uh, he gets to view the timeline of the case what was uh, what is being worked on this case and such details like that along with this he also gets details like uh, other related details like orders uh, which the customer has or the account has placed other related details uh, uh, which will be required uh, by the user in case to uh, troubleshoot this case much better and the, the user can also chat with the customer over here and provide uh, the customer with some details by email post or they can create articles for them. Also, if the user now needs more information about the customer, he can go to view more details about the customer and they are taken to the customer detail page where they get 360 degree view of their customers like basic contact details, interaction timeline which notifies the user about uh, the, the interactions they had previously with the with that customer in in a chronological order some alerts that the uh, some alerts for those customer if they are having some assets they are pending some service on those assets or uh, some of their uh, bills are pending they would get such con contextual uh, alerts over here they are given information about the cases that the customer has raised earlier uh, to assist them with the orders that the customer has placed earlier and the asset uh, which the customer holds and now if the user wants to know more about the asset which uh, uh, they have raised uh, they can open this asset in a view and they are taken to the asset console view where they get all the details of that asset like when was this asset purchased is the warranty active what was the price and all those details they can also have an overview of this asset so as Sridhar mentioned that they can get con contextual alerts for this asset like if the asset is missing any uh, scheduled uh, service or they are missing uh, any uh, work order replacement they, that would appear over a milestone related to that case when the customer has placed the order when the uh, order was shipped and everything like that if there has been any work done previously on those asset so all those work order will appear chronolo chronologically in the work order timeline over here now uh, we also want to check like uh, uh, is this asset in warranty or no uh, for uh, uh, to assist the customer with their issue that they are facing so uh, we have the the user also gets the view of the all the war warranties that are uh, 
associated to this object and the user can uh, drive to one of the warranty that is in that is still uh, active and get to know uh, what is the nitty gritties of those asset warranty like how much labor is covered and how much uh, uh, how much percentage of expenses are covered for parts and labor and everything like that and if they want they can even go through the warranty term which is associated with this asset and they get more details about the warranty that they are raising the case against so the warranty was uh, in place for 36 months after the in install date and what is the description of that warranty what is the coverages of those warranty uh, and how for how many months of the duration the warranty will be covered in this way they get a basic view of their warranty but the user still lacks uh, nitty gritties of the warranty like what is being covered and what is not covered so in manufacturing cloud they also have this covered with warranty term coverages which they get so one of the uh, we can see that uh, uh, we are getting information about what's been covered and what's not uh, covered that is excluded from the warranty so the user can check on the warranty uh, that is in place so he gets to know that uh, the ring gear has to be replaced and that is included in our warranty so since we now have got the view that the warranty is in place and the part can be covered the customer can raise or the user can raise a key, uh, claim for that customer to replace those uh, item for uh, that asset so he creates a claim item for that asset which is tracked under the claim item in our manufacturing cloud which gives us information about uh, what claim uh, is being raised for that asset, uh, what is that asset and what is the fault date, uh, how much was those uh, components or parts being used and some basic description about the uh, 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 claim. Now the customer uh, wants to uh, see what is being covered under this claim item so he can go he can go to the related and see the claim coverage to know what will be covered under this claim like parts or the services or like labor services will be kind of uh, covered under this item so that is being tracked in our system by claim cover coverage item clean coverage record so this mentions all the items like what what is the part being replaced? What is the warranty that the customer is being using? And other details like how, how much amount would be used. So final part of the claim coverage is so since we know all the details that what will be covered. So the user creates a claim uh, coverage payment detail here. We will be tracking all the payment of the customers. Uh, has to make like uh, if all the payments are covered like parts are being covered or the labor is being covered if the labor is not being covered we can track that over here in the claim coverage payment detail and we can see that uh, the claim amount would be 300 but the part is in place so the adjusted amount is uh, zero for the customer and when this is approved by our claim adjud adjudicator this would appear over our claim and we can see that the total amount that the customer has to place for replacing this part was zero and then the user can create work orders for those asset and track the service under this work orders so that's how uh, we manage the case from beginning where we start uh, getting a case from our websites or whatever channels we are using uh, to a claim getting reclaimed by a customer in our system in manufacturing cloud. Thank you.
Yeah, this is great, Roshan. Thank you for doing this. Having one single view for a Salesforce user, especially the service rep who, you know, is constantly bombarded from a customer. Uh, this adds a lot of value with everything on, you know, we we even know the title and the name of the customer, basically contact details, which are very helpful while talking to a customer when a case is raised and having that action items or action launchers right at hand definitely gives a faster speed um, to uh, to the customers. In fact, Salesforce has launched uh, something called Salesforce uh, Einstein for service, uh, which can automate or AI can be introduced there for a lot of conversational things as well. Uh, wherein uh, recommendations of knowledge articles can also come. We did a previous webinar on that. Please uh, find that on YouTube. Uh, awesome. Uh, if uh, so, next webinar, what we are going to do is on the healthcare. Uh, we will be talking about the patient onboarding journey on 26th April. So look forward to this audience to. Uh, you know, have a fun uh, journey around patient onboarding. That's about it. Uh, thank you, everyone. We'll stay here for another two minutes uh, for any questions, but uh, that's that was all about the webinar.